you cannot build an internal combustion engine car if all you have built so far were horse-driven cars. There is kind of a handy-hand -hand development of industry and research and engineering and science. It's not possible for the Germans to have had only saucers and nothing else of similar type bizarre weaponry. And uh, at the beginning I thought with the tradition of my country, in Eastern Europe we were told that, well, all the Germans had was some v one, V1, V1s and maybe some V2s, but did the V2s actually fly? Ah, uh, maybe not. Maybe these were plywood models. Uh, some V2s fell over England, but did they hit London or not? Probably not. And I have a film that we can show later, we can see later, of the V1 and V2 offensive. 5,000 V2s were produced and a lot of them hit London. And in the height of the V1 and V2 offensive, one million people were evacuated from London. England was on the brink of uh, getting out of the war. If they were just a few weeks more advanced with the project. Anyway, in Bulgaria we were told that the V1s and the V2s were all the Germans had. Here is the V1 cross-section. Here is the V2. That's all. And then I started my research in some very hard to find books of this sort. Hitler's last weapons, Hitler's secret weapons, Hitler, Hitler's vengeance weapons. Most of them are British books and are hard to find in this country. Secret weapons of World War II. Some of them are produced by neo-Nazi outfits as the establishment labels them. The most incredible ones were actually here in this book by Samizdat in Canada. The Deutsche Waffen und Geheimwaffen des Zweiten Weltkriegs. This is Rudolf Lussar, a patent bureau officer, was the first one to mention in the official literature the existence of German flying saucers. In this book, this is an extremely rare book to find. Published in Germany, and when it was translated in English, here it was shortened, as it happens always with the books that have dangerous information. And many other books. I've made a big <laughs> volume of these, and this is just a small part of them. Very hard to find books, basically collector items. And I have found sometimes a single photograph from a book. So rare are these photos. And if you don't know what you're looking for, you would just go over, over it without realizing. And I would give many examples here. They have a photograph of a spacesuit of a pilot sitting in the cockpit of this twin-engine turbojet stealth fighter bomber built by the Horton brothers. But if you are not suspecting German space flights, you will think that this is a pilot suit only. Only after you carefully, because there is no text underneath to explain, after you analyze the space suit carefully, you realize that it is way more advanced than the Vostok and Gemini space suit. Let's go very quickly through the cornucopia of uh, killing devices that the Germans created. I was astonished myself many times over. Mini remote control demolition tanks. Giant uh, minesweeper tank, so heavy that the mine won't be even able to lift it. The exploding mine wouldn't do anything to the tank. A cannon that would blow uh, air circles, like the circles coming from a pipe. Smoke rings. This is a smoke ring cannon against low flying airplanes. When this turbulence hits the wing of the plane, it loses lift and crashes in the ground. Fired by coal. This was a, probably the only cannon in the world that was firing with powderized coal. They didn't have uh, gasoline or, or explosive at the end of the war. And the German genius found a solution again. Uh, almost straight out of the comics is, 
This is a submachine gun that fi fires around the corner <laughs> with this special periscope here. The prototype of the Kalashnikov gun, probably one of the best submachine guns in the world. And then to this time, the Kalashnikov is almost a carbon copy of it. A night vision infrared scope, a projector with a scope. Here's only the projector. This is an infrared heat-seeking homing device for their anti-aircraft rockets. I mean, things that I, as an engineer, as a phys physicist, never imagined existed in, in, in World War II Germany. This is not only the snorkels for their U-boats, but this is a stealth technology. This is a radar invisible snorkel. Recently, I heard from Al Bielik that the Germans were experimenting with uh, Philadelphia technology on their U-boats. But unlike the Americans, they were experimenting with the U-boats running in water, which introduces one more variable in the equation. And the equation backfired, and they lost all the U-boats. They never came back. They lost them in hyperspace somewhere. So some of the tabloid stories of German U-boats that resurfaced and were captured by the American Navy just a few months ago. I mean, in 92, there was a big tabloid story in Weekly World News. Maybe just that. Some of these U-boats surfaced way back in space and time, as did a lot of the sailors. Some of the sailors that disappeared on the Philadelphia experiment, some of them were found embedded in a brick wall in an Italian bar in Milan. Others appeared in a restaurant in Brooklyn from a back room and there was no back room, they just walked through the wall. I mean, so many bizarre things happen through the Philadelphia technology, but anyway, this is not just an insulated case of a stealth technology. They were, I mean, because on the higher levels, what the Americans have is immediately transmitted to the Germans and vice versa. It is the same Knights Templar secret society and the same secret world bankers that finance both sides of a war. These are the guys that move the briefcases with the secret documents and make sure that if the Germans in, invent the rockets, there will be rockets in the British and the Russians too. I know that in uh, 1936 there was over a hundred U.S. corporations inside Nazi Germany helping to build <coughs> their war machine. Excellent. And there is also um, um, great we'll, 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 we'll come to that. I, I'd like you to, to, to say this when, when the time comes. I'll be talking about the secret uh, behind-the-scenes collusion. Uh, right now, we are only at the level of the hardware. Okay. Stealth technology. Well, these are machine guns that were firing upwards from a fighter plane at the belly of the bombers. This was their least defended part. Who has ever seen a machine gun mounted in this way on a fighter plane? I mean, incredible solutions that show that the Germans had the guts, the fantasy, the imagination, the uh, engineering and scientific mastery, brilliance. I mean, I was so much impressed. Other, other books on the same topic. This is two bombers joined together with a fifth engine added in between to pull their giant gliders. Anybody seen a... Uh, I mean... <laughs> and this is the giant glider that this bomber was pulling before they mounted engines on it. This is a little bit smaller than the jumbo jet. Could carry a tank. Uh, the, 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 what is it, the, the, the front section opens. Made up of canvas. They were made for the invasion of England. And 100 of them would have landed one tank division, 100 kilometers of London, with nothing in between but a home guard, some poorly armed guys. Uh, it's probably a last-minute Illuminati intervention not to, invent, not to invade England, but to hit the Russians instead. But this is 60 feet tall, the cabin from the ground. I mean, this is a monstrous plane. Why didn't they show the photographs for 40 years after the war? Because they didn't want to create the impression in us that everything we have in our Luftwaffe here came from the German Luftwaffe. This is the best fighter plane in the world, a, a, a twin engine, twin propeller, push-pull combination, 